Hello again, guys, and welcome back to uh, another part of the West, or er, West Clock, oh my gosh, the Forestville eight-day uh, kitchen clock uh, service with the Ingram, possibly Ingram movement in it. But before we get into all that, here's a word from our unpaid sponsor on Commercial Carousel. On the back, on the back, on the back of the donkey, on the back of the donkey, on the back. explain this very well in the last part the transfer like you know how um, the spring is all wound up here obviously you can see you know power is transferred all the way you know to the end here where the balance wheel is and then the balance wheel just the escapement here this just regulates <laughs> sorry something just fell over in the background I'm testing a big bend movement over there and it just did a somersault so I don't know why that happened Anyway, so our escapement controls how fast, or the whole, this whole, these three parts here, our escape wheel, our pallet fork, and our balance wheel, it's more so the balance wheel than anything else, that controls the speed of how fast the spring comes down. And over, over the years, you know, people have figured out, okay, I can use this spring running down to accurately tell time with our time-telling uh, system. I don't know the exact name of it, but yeah, with a 12-hour or 24 hour clock, whatever, you know, you can get this to, to work for you in that, in that respect. Anyway, so the spring can be used to tell time and yeah, but anyway, uh, you know, without a balance wheel in here, you can just kind of flick the, um, the uh, pallet fork back and forth to see if the spring will, or see if power is interrupted in this train of gears here. And as you can see, it's not right now, but it should be in a second here. It, sh it shouldn't run for too long. See that? Then that'll happen. This'll happen when your clock is fully serviced and assembled and everything, and it'll just stop. So that's obviously no good. And yeah, there's our problem right there. It is a worn bushing, which I don't know how to replace as of yet. Well, I have an idea of how, but I don't have the result. I don't have a, any sort of machinery to do that as of yet. I don't think it's that terribly difficult, but still. We're not there yet, so I'm just replacing the whole plate. And what is highly annoying is since this plate here is riveted on, I can't check for elongated bushings on this side unless I were to grab a drill press and drill all these rivets out. But I'm not going to do that. So, that's great. I mean, this, this whole movement, I'm pretty sure all these movements were like this, where they had this riveted on plate. Too bad this wasn't screwed on. How much more would it have cost you guys to just, you know, take this off and, or, you know, put screws in so you could take it off anyway? That's not the case, so we can't do that. As for letting our spring down, there was a spring click over here, and what you do is stick a let down key into this and then uh, adjust the uh, click so it could let go of the power and then you could slowly run your spring down. We're not going to do that because, uh, well, I don't have a key for this, and I have, well, I have a key, but I don't have it with me right now. So, uh, that's great. <laughs> and um, what we're going to do is I'm going to loosen this pillar nut here, take the pallet fork out. And I know I said power was interrupted on this, but I'm pretty sure we could probably get this to move if I just, you know, shake it around a little bit. I'm going to take the pallet fork out and let the gears run down like that. I think that'd be the... I think that'd be the way to go with this one. So we are going to do that. Uh, where am I? Okay, here is my pliers here. Oh, there we go. And we're just going to pop this out of here. There we 
we are. I think we're almost out. Oh my goodness. I might want to put some gloves on just in case things get like wacky here because those wheels are going to start spinning at a pretty quick pace. So, you know, things are going to get moving here like quick. So we're going to get to that. And I'm, I don't want to bend the plates either. That'd be fun to deal with. Dealing with a whole bunch of alignment issues. Uh-huh. There's nothing here. Is this like on? What is this? Did this come off? What the heck is this thing here? <laughs> it's just riveted on here too. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh no. Is that what am I seeing right now? How does this come off? What the heck is going on with this movement here? Okay, this one doesn't have that. I'm, I'm commenting on this pillar here, trying to figure, does this unscrew? This has to like turn backwards or something. This is gonna be unscrewed like so. Let's just see here. I'm just scratching it. Fun, viewers, lots of fun. This does not come off. Trying to mentally comprehend if that comes. Okay, well, we'll figure that out after. I'll at least let the spring down. Uh huh. And get this out of here. Come on, out you come. It'd be a little easier if I could just get this out of here. Oh my goodness. Oh, pff, I'm dumb. Look at that. Nice grip spot, a spot to grip here. Yeah, this has to come off like that. Okay, there we go. Oh man, I thought, did they really screw me that bad? Where they just wouldn't even bother to, to have it where this would just come off? Oh man, I thought I was really in the, there we go. Okay, this is coming off now. So, let's see here. Whoa, okay, that wasn't the way I had planned that to happen. Uh, did that just fully come down all the way in like under two seconds? <laughs> oh shoot, okay, um, that's not how I want that to go. Uh, okay. Okay, we're just gonna do it like that. That didn't, that did not go the way I wanted it to. Uh, are we damaged anything in here? Okay, viewers, that did not quite happen how I wanted it to. <laughs> So, so we're going to just move on from there. Yeah, you have to be careful doing that method because if you're pulling too many things up, then you're just going to end up letting the spring down. Good thing I had these gloves. Oh, man. That's a good thing there. Okay. Let's get this out of here. You can see kind of the way this spring is where you've got this this tab sticking down through here and this final coil comes up in here and wraps around this pole here. You got that tab sticking through there. On the, on the barrel, I'm not gonna call it the barrel cover. Oh, there is no barrel. On the spring uh, cover thing. I don't know, this, this piece here. Do I have an extra one of those? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my finger on that right now. Yeah, that is not the way that was supposed to happen. Okay, well, that's how springs are, though. They'll just... Okay, now let's pull it up. Oh, yikes. Okay, let's just try and pry this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so that mounts on here. And there is our massive... Well, that's not massive. Look, there's our spring. Let me just pull it up and off here. Come on. Out you come. Oh, this pole comes off. And of course, it all just comes out like that. Oh, that's not too big. That's big for me. I haven't worked on that many, you know, springs of that size. And here is our spacer. Spacer pole there. And there's our gear train. So that should be, and of course, this click wheel here. This is the same as the... Uh, as the other one was in our parts drawer or our parts container. Here's our gear train. Let's just pull this up and off. Oh my goodness. And before I disassemble it, there's a really nice look at the gear train. 
but I want to point something else out that I think we're going to do. Uh, I've, I've come to hear about this as bad practice, direct quote. I don't know from who. It's just, it's just something you, you kind of hear about when you're in this, when you're working on clocks and stuff. And if any of you remember the West Clock Sleep Meter series from a while back, I looked at the uh, escapement wheel uh, pivots as I was disassembling it, and I saw some extra holes were punched into the brass, and I thought, well, some goof at West Clock uh, missed the uh, missed the spot a few times, so he uh, he punched it. You know, he, he kept kind of trying. He punched it once, missed, punched it again, missed, got it the third time, but left these other two holes behind. And I eventually, someone in the comments section, I think, said. Yeah, that's an actual um, way of uh, pushing or fixing uh, worn pivots. That is not at all done by the factory. That is some clockmaker or somebody has done that. And, yeah, I think it was labeled as bad practice. Well, if we look around as viewers, we've got no bushing machines or anything like that. So, it looks like that's all we're left with. And... How is this method done? Okay, well, obviously the goal of it is to just make the hole smaller, the elongated hole, just to make that smaller. And I've got a pin punch here I think we're going to use. And I don't know why it's known as bad practice. If you haven't got a bushing machine or anything like that, and you've got a situation like this, what else are you really supposed to do? Well, I can't exactly call up Ingram and ask for a shipment of top plates. Okay, I've just, I'm just uh, practicing here on this regulatorless um, plate here. And I've kind of mangled up this one hole, but it doesn't really make much of a difference because it's this is gone, so it's not like you can really use this for anything anyway. Unless this screwed on, unless it was a version of this that had like a screw-on regulator. I don't know. But anyway... We have gotten this hole. I've been kind of, I've been taking my pin punch here and I've just been like tapping it. Well, not like that, but you know, kind of have it in a certain spot and just really kind of whack it. And this hole here was perfectly fine. I just wanted to see if I actually could make it smaller and I have. So that is okay. And I'm just gonna try again here. Once again, this isn't really, the goal is just to put the material forward. Oh, I don't want my... Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I've... Let's just say I accomplished that. Yeah, I want to practice on this plate here a bit first before I go over to one of the other two and try and fix the bushing hole on there. <sighs> yeah, we could have used this if that was still there, but it's gone, so... Hey, at least we get to learn something, I guess. I don't know, viewers... Uh, tell me your tell me your thoughts and opinions on uh, on all this uh, crazy ram and Greg's destroying plates or something. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, tell me your opinion on all this on on rebushing. Well, not rebushing, but but trying to fix bushings this way. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no one has discussed it really uh, around me that much. Maybe maybe you can tell. And if you're going to post something in the comment section going after me, at least make it constructive criticism, because I don't think anyone learns anything with, oh, you're an idiot, you don't actually know what you're doing. It's like, do you mind um, trying to help me out here? I'm just kind of trying to do this and not screw everything up. <laughs> also, these other two plates, the clock probably won't run as is with these. So someone has to do something somewhere. I think I'm, the, I think I'm this clock's best chance right now. I'm doing a little bit more practice here on this. Let's try and kind of push this. Remember, I'm not trying to like... Oh, did I already do that? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, fix this particular plate here. It's already wrecked, but I'm just trying to practice on it. I keep getting my pin punch stuck in the actual hole. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I think we did something with that anyway. Okay, I'm ready to try it on one of these here, and I don't think I'm going to record it, because, you know, it's fairly rough right now, I'm not that great at it. Okay, I've just got it back together here, just quick, just to see if my, um, 
great uh, work here would uh, actually do anything. As you can see, it's a little bit off still. That might be too much still. I don't know. But anyway, we're not getting power here. I'm just flipping the pallet fork back and forth, and we're hardly doing anything. So that's obviously not enough. Spring is slightly wound up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep experimenting. Oh, we're, got it. Well, we're going now. We're going there for a few seconds. See, it's supposed to be just, you know, as you flip the power, the pallet back and forth, you're supposed to be getting that sort of, well, the gears are supposed to be turning along with it. But obviously we're not getting that. I only did, I only kind of tried to press it in on one side. I didn't do both sides. Maybe I should do both. I don't know. I'll give that a try. Now, this is the first time I went in there with the pin punch, and uh, looking back at this now, and here's the second time, this is fairly sloppy work. I see why it's not as bad practice, but I didn't have anything else to go with, so this is the method we went with, and we'll see how it comes out. Sticker, and I believe you have to, with this kind of pin punch method, you have to kind of get it in on both sides. You can't just do one side, or else it won't work, I think. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, yeah, it seems to, you know, stay nice and straight now, so I'm going to call it that. I mean, they, it rocks around here if you do like this, but it doesn't slide to the slide to the right like it was before, so I'm going to try and see if that'll work. Anyway, let's put all this stuff in the cleaner, shall we? And I completely forgot, viewers, to take this spring off, so we're going to do that now, and I believe it hooks on this way here. kind of drives... And the wheel turns that way, and the spring kind of goes that way as it winds up. And notice with these springs from this era, they always seem to be so tight on. <laughs> the coil is so... Look at that. That's not going anywhere. So you really have to screw around with these sometimes to get these to get the great wheels off of them. Usually I just turn it backwards and try and slide it out. Come on. Oh, come on. Yeah, I think these are, like, machined in here somehow. They're pressed together a little bit. Might have been some pressing going. Yeah, I'm going to have to go in there with a screwdriver and just gently push this up. Come on. Uh, maybe I shouldn't use my good screwdrivers for that. Yeah, I can't get this stupid thing off here. <laughs> it comes off. I mean, it's just held on by a, by a tab. Come on. Yeah, this these things are these things can be so tricky to get off sometimes because they're so tightly wrapped around that center coil there. Oh, there, finally, okay. Okay, I'm just looking at one of my other great wheels. This one has a longer um, hook, I guess. I guess we'll call it a hook that hooks onto the spring here. This one has a longer hook. This one has kind of a shorter one. I wonder if it kind of broke off a bit. You can't really see it, but um, there it is. There. This is this is this is shorter on this than it is on here. That's interesting. Oh no, the camera does want to focus. Okay, well there you can see it better there on the on the other great wheel. Once again, they're the same exact wheel. They're just uh, from a different clock, and you can see this one's shorter. That is strange. I don't know. This seems to work, so I might as well clean both of these, though, hey, <laughs> while I'm at it. Okay, so we got our ultrasonic cleaner fired up, and I kind of forgot about a certain element that this thing has. It has a heater on it. And I kind of forgot about that uh, because I was originally using flammable cleaning liquids, like mineral spirits and uh, paint thinner type stuff in, like, 2017 or whatever. And, uh, you know, I kind of, I read in the instruction manual on the ultrasonic that uh, flammable cleaning liquids are for, forbidden, you know, if you if you run the machine with the heat on. And it's like, oh, okay. And then eventually, you know, th as things change later down the line, as I continued experimenting with clock cleaning solutions, I came across Simple Green. And I've just found out that Simple Green isn't flammable. Well, if it's not a flammable liquid, then why can't I use this? So I'm gonna experiment and see if the heater does any does a, a better job. I don't know. It might. It might not. 
I'm not, I'm not quite sure. This thing sure takes a few minutes to heat up, though. Like, uh, I had to pour hot water into this thing already to get it to where it is now. So we have everything in the simple green container here. It's, uh, it's uh, diluted with water. We have it in the container. We have it bobbing up on the ultrasonic cleaner there, floating in the tank. Run it for about 30 minutes, not with the heat on originally, but we're going to try the heat. I pull everything back out of there, pull it out of this container into this red bin here where the fluids can kind of splash around and not have any sort of, and not go out everywhere and whatnot. And then I kind of, you know, scrub it down. And then when that's done, I rinse it with alcohol. And then maybe I'll do that one to two times. I'll see when everything's dry. I'll see how clean everything actually is. Actually, one thing I've just realized about the cleaner as well, while it's running, it produces heat. So there's a heating element and it produces heat while it's running. Okay, well, uh, I guess, I don't know, I'll, I'll run it for 30 minutes and see what happens. I want to make sure this thing doesn't overheat and explode or something. And yes, those degrees are in Celsius. This is a Canadian, well, it's not a Canadian machine, but it's, it's, made, it's made to be sold in Canada. Okay, let's throw everything in our cleaner. Uh, we'll take our great wheel, and we'll take our sprint. Actually, we'll take this thing first, we'll take this back plate. Uh, what I like to do is hook balance wheels around stuff like this so they don't get lost in the cleaner. And I've got four pillars here, so I can use, I'm not gonna use that. The reason why there's multiple balance wheels and other parts lying around is because I was working on multiple projects at the time and I figured I'd just clean a, a few different things at once and call it a day there. Might as well have everything in one big batch and clean it all at once in the cleaner. I'm gonna hook, actually I can just throw this one in because it's not even, it's got no hairspring on it. Usually I'll leave the hairsprings on while they're being cleaned. I'm gonna have to do two batches of stuff here as well. I'm just looking at this. Uh, how can I do this now? I'll just throw this in. You know what, we might not have enough fluid actually for that right now. I'll just throw the rest of this in. And uh, we got some balance cups in there too. I'll have to remember to get those out. I'll get these in here as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to do two batches of stuff, I think. I'll pop the lid on. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put everything else in in the second uh, batch. There you go, viewers. It may look slightly ridiculous, but there's our great uh, cleaning here. And just kind of have those electronic um, parts just kind of for weight at this point. I just kind of have them to keep this container a little more steady on the, on the open water here. Uh, yeah, this thing is actually the perfect size. This Rubbermaid uh, container is the perfect size for this cleaner. Oops, come on. I don't want it kind of jocking one way or the other. Yeah, okay, there we go. I don't want it to tip all, as you know, you don't want it to tip over and then spill the contents of the cleaning solution in the water here, so. Although these cleaners are, and this is a hack, by the way, these cleaners are meant to have all your stuff in there. Well, a, a, a little kind of hack or whatever, put your stuff in a container of some kind, have it in the water, and your ultrasonic um, bubbles and stuff will be able to go right through this plastic and still clean everything. So. You got that, viewers. That's not half bad. And now we will run it for 30 minutes, and I'll be keeping track of this temperature and all that. I'll be coming down here and looking at it. But anyways, viewers, yeah, we got our weight. we we'll kind of weight on, although it's not, <laughs> it's not the greatest. I might leave it off. Yeah, this is doing better without that. I don't know why I put that on there right now. Okay, we'll leave that off, and, uh, and uh, we'll run it for 30 minutes. Anyways, guys, I thank you for checking out this part of the Forestville, the Ingram, well, I think it's an Ingram eight-day movement, the Ingram Forestville porcelain uh, kitchen clock. And I hope the cleaner doesn't explode on me, <laughs> and it shouldn't. And uh, if, if all goes to plan, well, I'll see you in the next part.